Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dr. Gevek and we are talking about labor market equilibrium chapter, chapter 4, part 2. In this part, we'll talk about lots of things including economic efficiency, Pareto efficiency. We'll talk about first welfare theorem and economics and firms and workers surplus. Let's get started. Efficiency, let's talk about Pareto efficiency first. Pareto efficiency exists when all possible gains from trade between parties have been exhausted. Pareto efficient allocation. You know what? I kind of hate just reading the definitions. Let me give you an example. So let's say I like to drink five cups of coffee a day, which, which is true. Five cups of coffee. But I have one can of Red Bull energy drink. On the other hand, you like uh, Red Bulls. You would like to drink one one a day and you have a gift card for uh, five cups of coffee at some coffee shop. So if you trade this, right, we trade this, I am better off, you're better off. We call this allocation Pareto efficient allocation. Pareto efficient allocation happens when there is no other allocation that makes a person better off without hurting the other person. What if... You gave me only four, you gave me five cups of coffee, but you took one back. So I'm hurt now. You have one cup of coffee and your Red Bull. So that, that you just broke the Pareto efficiency. Another example could be, uh, I am really obsessed with these uh, gummy bears, Black Mountain, something like that. Organic gummy bears, little bags. So imagine I'm distributing to everybody in the class, 30 people. Everybody gets a bag. So if, if you know, if there's one person... All right, there is five more bags. If I give all the bags to one person, I didn't hurt anyone, right? But now I added five more. So what if that that individual doesn't like candy and gives it to somebody else, right? But that somebody else gives him some or oranges, two oranges, okay? So if this is the case, everybody's happy and he got his oranges, he got now how many candies? Seven candy bags of gummy bears. Okay, this allocation is called Pareto efficient allocation. There is no other allocation. Make somebody better off without hurting any other person. What if I took his oranges, right? And took somebody's only candy bag and gave it to him. So you are basically hurting as some other person. So when the state of the world is Pareto efficient, to improve one person's welfare necessarily requires decreasing another person's welfare. So it becomes kind of like what we call zero-sum game. To benefit somebody else, you are hurting somebody else. So in policy applications, we ask whether a change can make one better off without harming anyone else. If you give me some tax credit and it hurts some other uh, citizens, that's not a Pareto improvement. Um, if the answer is yes, then the proposed change is said to be Pareto improving. Just keep this in mind, okay? So now let's move on to our graph. We talked about it previously. We have wage per hour, employment on the x-axis. Uh, you have labor supply curve upward sloping, labor demand curve downward sloping. So you have this equilibrium point. We can call it point A or something else. E star is the equilibrium, market clearing employment level. W, w star is your wage rate. This is what you see in the market. So the area below the market wage rate, above the labor supply, workers are suppliers, limited by the equilibrium employment rate is called workers supply. Again, Area below wage rate, above labor supply curve, limited by the employment, the worker supply. Firm supply is defined as area below the labor demand curve, firms are demanders of labor. Above the wage rate, limited by the uh, number of workers employed is the firm supply. So a competitive, a competitive market results in efficient level of employment okay so we define economic efficiency or gains of from trade gains of trade uh, by the sum of firm supply plus worker supply so this whole thing is the economic efficiency 
So first of all, theory theorem in economics says that competitive equilibrium where labor demand and labor supply intersect, this point maximizes economic efficiency and gains from trade. So when competitive market fails, we have something called deadweight loss. Okay, and deadweight loss is the net loss in economic efficiency or economic surplus. In chapter 4, part 3, we'll learn about the deadweight loss and elasticity of demand and deadweight loss relationships. See you then.